Today is Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week. And we're beaming here from St. Margaret of Antioch in Belmont, remembering our brothers and sisters at St. Jerome in Gonzales. I'm Canon Ronald Branch, priest in charge of the parish, welcoming you to Sunday morning meditations on Palm Sunday. Let us pray. O God, the love of unity and author of peace, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of the enemy, that we may trust in your defense and not fear the power of any adversary. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the rest of the past night and for the gift of a new day with its opportunities of pleasing you. Grant that we may so pass its hours in the perfect freedom of your service, that at evening we again give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Sunday of the Passion, Palm Sunday, the Collect. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 to 9a. The Lord has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The end of the reading. Thanks be to God. My Lord, King Jesus, no man cannot hinder thee. Ride on, King Jesus, ride on, no man cannot hinder thee. time. Ride on, King Jesus. No, no man cannot hinder, hinder, hinder thee. Ride on, King Jesus. Ride on, no man cannot hinder thee. No man cannot hinder thee. No man cannot hinder thee. No Morning, fare thee well, fare thee well. In that bread, get up. Morning, fare thee well, fare thee well. In that bread, get up. Morning, fare thee well, fare thee well. In that bread, get up. Morning, fare thee well, fare thee well. Right. Ride on, 
King Jesus. No, no man cannot hinder, hinder, hinder the ride on King Jesus. Ride on, no man cannot hinder the. 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 Psalm 31, verses 9 to 16. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to my enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man out of mind. I am a, as useless as a broken pot, for I have heard the whispering of the crowd Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My hands are in, my times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant, and in your loving kindness, save me. The epistle is taken from Philipp Philippians chapter 2, 5 to 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being form, found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess 
that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the end of the reading. The Lord be with you and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke chapter 23 reading verses 1 to 49. Glory to Christ our Savior. The assembly of elders rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judah from Galilee, where he began even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, Away with this fellow! Release Barabbas for us! This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him. A third time he said to them, why, what evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore, 
and the breast that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the, mon to, to, the, to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the King of the Jews, save yourself. There is also an inscription over him. This is the King of the Jews. One of the criminals who were charged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself on us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon while the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle, saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the woman who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. The Gospel of the Lord praise the Christ our Lord. A young girl in confirmation class at St. Michael's of All Angels in Dugo Martin, on hearing us speak about Good Friday, inquired, why do we call it Good Friday? And why not Black Friday? That was the question coming from this young girl who was trying to understand how we can call the death of Jesus on a cross good, rather than regarding it as something disastrous. And should it not be called Black Friday? To understand the events of Holy Week, we first have to understand the link between Palm Sunday, Good Friday, and Easter Day. It's a three-legged stool. And anyone you move of those three, the whole thing collapses. It is important for us to note how the gospel writers deal with it. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, 
the Synoptic Gospels, they dedicate about one third of their pages to this event. John dedicates half of the pages that he writes to this event. Thus showing the importance when we look at the ratio, the importance of this week in our lives, Holy Week. Jesus rode in to Jerusalem on a donkey. With him was a large crowd crying out, Hosanna. And they spread their cloaks on the ground and with palms around they shouted as though they had won a victory, as though they were expecting Jesus to establish a new kingdom on earth. Here they thought the time had come for them to remove the rule that they had over them from the Romans and that they could establish their own independence headed by Jesus. They failed to see the symbol of peace and love that Jesus gave them in a parable that had him riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. He did not come on a horse. He did not come with soldiers. He came on a beast of peace, a donkey that is accustomed carrying loads for its masters. This is how Jesus came. And so we must understand that in this parable that Jesus is giving them the action of riding into Jerusalem, they would pick up from it some semblance of what he stood for. For he was a man of peace. He was a man of love. He's a man of humility. Here he was coming in, as Luke puts it in the scripture. He faced, or put his face like flint, without making any intention of power or ruling it over people, but rather obeying what he had to do. For he already knew what the days ahead would be for him. Before he came, he spent a little while in Bethany with his friends, Mary and Martha and Lazarus. Lazarus who he had raised from the dead. In his final moments on earth, he thought it would be good to be among friends who would discuss his life story and who would give him good treatment in preparation for what was to come. He was not taking the risk to go to Jerusalem in this time of the Passover. For as he learned 33 years before at his birth, he did not want to repeat or to hear the song again, there's no room in the inn. 
This was Jesus making decisions to stay in Bethany, two miles from Jerusalem, before he undertook his final journey to ride into town. He was departing from one of the things that was deliberately done during his ministry. He tried his best not to go to the public too openly. But he knew all along, for he told us on many occasions, my hour is not yet come. Now that his hour seemed to be beckoning, he came riding on a horse into Jerusalem. He was now willing to face the public, to lay down the gauntlet, as if to say, here I am. This is what I stand for. I have come to save those who are lost. And now the time is coming for me to die on the cross so that resurrection will take place and we'll have new life. This is Jesus doing this. And it is significant for us to understand the importance of Holy Week as we go from day to day approaching that time of the cross. We have just finished once a week the stations of the cross, reminding us of the steps to that eventual death and crucifixion on the cross. We thank God that he sent his son to save those who were lost. And we pray that as we await his coming again, as we live the risen life, understanding the importance of serving him with all our hearts, with all our souls, with all our minds, and with all our strength, as we establish a strong relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we look forward to that time when we will inherit that kingdom that he has prepared for prepared people. God speaks to us on this Palm Sunday and reminds us of what Jesus did when he rode in to Jerusalem to lay down his life so that we might live. May God continue to bless, guide, and strengthen us in this noble endeavor, now and forever. Amen.
on page 44 of our liturgies, we do the form B intercessions. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Thank you for tuning in to us on this Palm Sunday when we reflected on the lessons prescribed through the liturgy. We want to thank Reverend Marshall Joseph for sharing with us today the readings. And we want to invite you to join us next week at the same time for our program. We pray that you will have a holy week, that you will make it or make an attempt to attend one of our services during the week, between Monday to Thursday, there is service every evening at 5.30 p.m. On Friday, there is service at 8, then there is service at 12 to 3, as we observe the three-hour service on Good Friday, Saturday evening at 6. We have baptisms and the Easter Vigil. And Sunday morning, we have our 7.30 Easter service. You are all invited to join us. And we, at the same time, we try to facilitate those who are unable to join us physically, virtually. Have a spirit-filled week. And may God continue to bless you all. Amen.